I'm not going to stand here in front of one of the great wonders of the world and argue about an old movie. I'll go back inside. If you figure out some plan to make 800 bucks last a lifetime, knock on the door. I'll be in there. You're listening to the Keeping Your Money Show with Jamie Westenbarger and Bart Steinler. All right, welcome back to the Keeping Your Money Show. I'm Jamie Westenbarger, joined as always by Bart Steinler. We've been discussing potential bank heist in the near future as a warning from the FBI. We also talked about credit cards and the amount of really crushing debt that the country is holding in those. Um, over a tr- over a billion, a hundred billion dollars of interest paid. Uh, in the last 12 months, as well as over a trillion dollars in balances on those cards. It's funny, Bart, you know, we talk about this sometimes, but it's like when we're putting the show together, sometimes thing, there ends up being like a theme, mm-hmm. and it's never intentional. <laughs> it's just sometimes, <laughs> it's just, you know, articles that strike us or news that strike us, you know, it just kind of becomes interesting. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, we're talking a lot about debt today or whatever you know uh it's just kind of funny but if you have a question for the show you're always welcome to call us you can call us at 888-98-MONEY is the number that's 888-986-6639 we don't take calls on the show but there is somebody that answers the phone 24 hours a day so you're welcome to give us a call on that you can also email us our email address is info info at keepingyourmoney.com and I do respond to all of those emails personally. You can follow up with the show, uh, pick up segments maybe you missed or you want to hear again through all of our uh, partners, which of course is iTunes, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Just search for the Keeping Your Money show. So we talk a lot about student loan debt because it really is a crisis in this country that just continues to get worse that nobody seems to really be doing anything about. Although, kudos to Eastern Michigan University, I have to say, because a couple days ago, they announced new programs, and I think it's certain degree programs. I don't have the specifics on it, but for certain degree programs, the first two years of college is going to be free based on how people align their, uh, you know, they have to qualify for it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But utilizing grants and some other things that they've received they've decided that someone accruing uh, student loan debt in their first two years who may not even make it through the four years is just not a tenable situation and so they've set up programs to actually make those first two years free so that's great and and we start in the right direction and we talked about a a college i can't remember the name of it right now but a a couple weeks ago or last week oh yeah it was based on what you did based on what you did so that the um the the cost for your education was going to be paid back out of a percentage of the money you made after you graduated so that you know that eliminated the need for all of these upfront student loans and if you've listened to this show you know we're no we are not fans of student loans um, and the reason for that is because of all of the unintended consequences. A lot of people are going into these loans. They are not educated on what the long-term consequences of having these loans are. And now today we see an article from USA Today, which brings up yet another unintended consequence that one in eight divorces are b- related and caused by student loan debt. And what was crazy is more than a third of the divorcees said that college loans played into, you know, the the relationship woes. Right. So over 33% said it absolutely was part of the equation. The one in eight were people that said it was 100% the reason, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which, you know, that's, that's a pretty significant, you know, thing to come up as the reason. But... I, I think the thing that you, you mentioned unintended consequences, you know, the unintended consequences are you're committing to a relationship with somebody for the rest of their life and the likelihood that they're going to have significant student loan debt based on just averages. I mean, the average outstanding balance in this country now is 34000 The amount of people that owe over 50000 has tripled just in the last few years. So two people coming out of college in their early 20s get their first jobs, they meet, they fall in love, they're going to get married. The likelihood is between the two of them, they'll have close to 100,000 or more in student loan debt. I mean, that is an unbelievable news to have from day one. 
Yeah. In 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 your relationship. Now you're gonna now you're gonna potentially have a family, you're gonna buy a home, you're gonna try and build a life for yourself, and you have six figures hanging over your head with mandatory monthly payments that you have to make. That's that's a tough way to begin the journey of marriage. That's right. You don't it's not really good to begin that journey with a lot of debt, you know. And and then some people go in and toss in a, a big wedding on top of that that they have to pay mm-hmm. for and, and, and the honeymoon and, and they add, you know, another twenty, thirty thousand in, in, in debt there. So the 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 lack of education prior to people starting to take on this debt is appalling. Yep. Um if you go to get a loan for a home You have to give them all sorts of information. You have to give them your tax returns, your income, list all your debt, and and then you have to be approved for it because they want to know what is going to be your ability to pay this back. Well, and the flip side is they also have to provide you a lot of information. What's Mm -hmm. the total amount of interest you're going to pay? What are your monthly payments going to be? All of these things. Many student loans are taken out open-ended. Right. Where you have no idea what the interest you're going to pay is. You have no idea what the monthly payment is even going to be because you don't know what the balance is till you graduate. And and like the story we did a few months ago of, of, about the um, orthodontist in California, they end up with a certain amount of debt and then all the interest piling on right. and ends up actually doubling the amount of debt that they have. Well, and then interestingly, in another article on CNBC, uh, they were talking about how women are disproportionately carrying a lot of this debt, too, for, for a couple different reasons. Um, and, and I think for our daughters out there, we need to make them aware of it, it being something that maybe even affects them more. And there's something in here that talks about, like, even when getting married, putting a prenup together to protect uh, the money that's applied towards student loan debt from... Uh, you know, potentially being recovered in the divorce settlement because and here's the scenario that they talked about in CNBC guy and girl get together. They both have degrees. They make a decision that the wife is going to, you know, have a couple kids um, and they make a decision that her career is going to get put on hold during that time frame. It's a common decision that happens across the country. You know, we can argue whether it's sexist or whatever all day long, but it's a common decision that gets made. Right. Um, so husband is off at his job, finds out that if he gets a master's degree, you know, he'll get promoted and all of these other things. And so the paying off of wife student loans becomes less important than paying off the student loans of so-called breadwinner, right? Now all of a sudden a divorce comes. He has a master's degree, no student loan debt. She has a bachelor's degree that she hasn't used in seven years with student loan debt. And they go into a divorce proceeding. And the reality is she's going to come out on the short end of that because she owns that student debt. His has been paid off. He's in a career making more money. So things that have to be considered, uh, especially for women, um, you know, is they go to college more than men, uh, which means they they take on more student loan debt than men. Uh, Statistically, they take on more student loan debt than even their male counterparts in college for whatever reason. Um, So just, you know, these are things we have to start talking about and not not in an arena where we have to be screaming about free college for everyone or we have to be screaming about equal rights or anything. Just just let's talk about the legitimacy of are we really a country that wants one point five trillion dollars in student loan debt to be hanging out over people's heads? We we had a woman come in the other day who's what in her 60s. She's actually 66 years old, had one hundred thousand dollars of student debt. I mean. That's insanity. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. There, there, no, no possible way is is, is you ever going to have the ability to pay that off. No, not even close. No. So I mean, you, you know, when you when you look at that situation, I mean, we just we have to refocus the argument. And what's what's unfortunate is, like a lot of arguments in this country today, we have two sides that dig in their heels, and that's just the end of it, right? We have mm-hmm. the sides that are digging in their heels and saying, well, there should be free college for everyone. Well, listen, folks, that doesn't solve anything. In, in, you can call me anytime. I give you my phone number 10 times during this show. Call me and try to explain to me how making something free helps anyone. First of all, it's not free. We're still all paying for it. It's just in taxes. But second of all, and most importantly, when something becomes free, it loses value. And, and that's part of the problem of where we're at in college student loan debt right now. It's basically become free 
because we don't we don't acknowledge the cost of it when we sign up for it, right? And, and that's why we've seen costs go through the roof because there's there's so much demand and so little supply. Yeah, and there's also a correlation between what the cost of college is and the amount of loan money that's available to Absolutely. pay for it. Because the 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 universities can raise tuition and they don't have to worry about college becoming unaffordable because there's all these guaranteed loans to right. pay for it. Well, you think but about you, what we do, right? Mm -hmm. So we charge 1% to manage people's assets. Mm -hmm. That's that's generally our fee. And there's you know, obviously exceptions to that, but that, that's just on a, on a general basis, right? Well, if we were going to raise our fee, which, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of regulation and expenses that go into what we do. And there's, there's risk of course. And so if we decided we were going to raise our fee, we would have to go out and talk to our clients on an individual basis. We'd also have to talk to the people that might want to be new clients and explain why we were charging more than maybe other people out there. Now, let's say the government gave you an allowance every year that you could go pay a financial advisor with. As long as my cost was under that allowance, would you care what my cost was? Probably not. So you, we're basically doing the same thing with college. We're saying, well, the cost doesn't matter because the college loans will approve you up to that amount, so it's fine. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. But it's not fine because you're coming out of college with $80,000 in student loan debt, you're gonna have to pay back a 7% interest. That's not okay. Now let's say you're running a college and the student loan money isn't there anymore, mm -hmm. and uh, and the um, enrollment starts to drop. You're gonna have to lower costs, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to find some way to do this for less money. So it's an ongoing conversation we need to continue to be having, but really where we need to continue having that is with our kids. We've got to talk to our kids about, you know, the way we're doing college right now is not the proper way to be doing it. Um, all right, coming up, we're gonna talk about two surprising uh, kind of. Uh, things that showed up in the ta the Trump tax cuts that maybe a lot of people aren't talking about that could affect you next year right here on the Keep Your Money Show. <laughs> 